Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's gonna be a haul video, but before I get into the haul video, I just wanna say a huge, unbelievable, resounding thank you to the people who supported me with my last video and went over and became patrons on my Patreon. Um, I was not expecting that response. I know everybody literally says that, but when I said I was gonna move the book club over there, I assumed I would get maybe like 10, 15 people who would actually like pay to read a book with me. <laughs> um, that seemed like a, a reasonable number to me. Uh, there's a million of you over there. Okay, not a million, but like there's way more than I was expecting and I may have cried for most of that night. The day I uploaded that video was a lot for me because holy crap, the response was like overwhelmingly supportive. So I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys. Um, and I am in the process of getting a ton of like stuff ready for you guys for like the book club and also just like extra content for you. Um, so if you guys have any more suggestions that you would like to see over there, let me know. It's mostly going to be like behind the scenes pet content, reading updates, and diamond painting stuff. As of right now, if you guys would like more, I'd be more than happy to talk about more over there. But holy crap, there's a lot of you now. And I was not expecting that. So pressure's on. Okay, so let's get into this haul because I have a lot. I've got a lot. I've already opened the packages, spoiler. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys what most of those are from source books. So let's just start. I've bought some books recently, which has been new for me, and I've got some packages to open. So let's start with that. So the first package is an Amazon package um, that I already opened. You guys know the drill by now. I order a lot from Amazon and I never know what I order versus what is being sent to me from my wish list. So this one, I haven't looked at the book yet though, because I saw slips. Um, I own this book, but haven't read it yet. I'm also very intrigued though. I hope you enjoy it. I love seeing the fur babies on your channels. By the way, my name is pronounced Myra, not Mira. Thank you for telling me, Myra. I appreciate it so much. Um, okay. This, it also, stop sending me stuff. Good Lord, girl. Um, this, oh, it's bigger than I was expecting. Oh, look at his face on the back. Okay. This, where did this come from? I want to say this came from like a bookstagram recommendation or maybe a TikTok recommendation. The recommendations are everywhere nowadays. This is Of Light and Darkness by Shane Layton. Um, this is book one of the Light and Darkness series, a modern fairy tale. I thought that this sounded amazing um, because I'm pretty sure this is like adult romance. Oh my god, the book is beautiful. The like in between chapter pages. Stunning. Oh my god. Books that have like a lot of like ink in them is always intriguing to me. This is so, oh my god, look at that title page. Look at that title page. Um, okay. So as far as I know, this is like, I want to say spicier adult romance because that's likely all that I have been saving into my wish list recently. Um, raised among a secret society of witches, shifters, and elves, human born Charlotte, oh boy, Ruzikova? Ruzi Kova finds that she is the freak in her world of magic and monsters. When she stands before an army of impossible obstacles, the likelihood of survival in this coming of age modern fairy tale is slim. After Charlotte captures the attention of the young elven prince, her scorn results in an all out war between light and darkness. Um, she knows no home other than the one nestled in the woods of the Czech Republic where witches draw spells of enchantment, shifters throw tea parties, and elves are the closest in kin. But as genocide and war threatens life as she knows it, she will fight for what she believes in, truth, bravery, and most importantly, love. Fighting with a coven of rogue monsters is tougher than it seems. Oh, this sounds so good. It says filled with Slavic folklore of light and darkness is the first part of an epic series not to be missed. That sounds amazing. Um, that sounds right up my alley. And I'm pretty sure this is new adult or adult. Either way. Oh my God, this book is so pretty. Um, but I've seen people starting to talk about this, but this is a book that pops up as a recommendation for anybody who likes like, you know, Akatar and Blood and Ash and Touch of Darkness and all of the like spicy fantasy romances. This sounds so good. I'm so excited for this. Thank you so much, Myra. Correct? Myra? Okay. Oh, I am so excited to get to it. Also, this book is pretty. Look at the spine. It even has like, I like series that actually include the number on the spine. It is much appreciated. I am so excited to read that. Oh, hold on. Let's just, yep, maybe, sort of, kind of, maybe, yes. Yeah, sure. That works. Okay. Next, I have this package that came to my P.O. box that has 
a very stuffed card in here and it's full of bookmarks and goodies. Um, I'm not gonna read the entire thing. She gave me permission to read this on camera, but it is a lengthy thing. Um, these are bookmarks that she made. Um, I don't sell any of these, but I'm thinking I might at some point. And obviously they are based on things that I love. So this is from Maya, who is Maya Lemaire Journey on Instagram. Um, these are so cute. Okay, first off, this one. Okay, so bookmark, yes, grassy field. It's got a goat attached to it. And this is like a felt made goat that is kind of stitched to the bottom of it. And it has a goat quote on it, which is hilarious. This one though. Okay, so it's got a lovely print on the back. It's got a taco. And it also has a culty quote on it. It says, eyes up here, taco, from Mariana Zapata. You know me so well, good Lord. Um, and also, I mean, obviously, obviously, we love a good uh, dagger to the throat moment. Am I right? Am I right? As we're talking about fantasy romance, uh, dagger to the throat moments are like the best. And it's got like a wood grin on the back. These are so cute. And then there's also a huge pouch of stickers in here. And it's like frogs and goodies. It's just, oh, it's a lot of frogs. There are many frogs. Oh, I like the NASA one. That one's so cool. Oh, there's so many space ones. There's a space panda. Okay, this one, this one takes the cake. It is a cat astronaut. Um, there's so many. Okay, so it's space and then there's animals. There's, oh my gosh, there's a lemon. It's like, there are so many stickers. So Maya, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Ooh, this one is giving me, oh, it's a diamond, diamond painting. But also I thought it was, it reminded me of that guitar. Um, thank you so much for all of the goodies. Holy guacamole. I don't know what to do with all of these. Oh, they're falling everywhere. Oh no, hold on. Okay, can we take a second to talk about this narwhal uh, banana sticker? This one is the winner. This one right here is the winner. I love that one. Okay, um, so that was an entire amazing card from Maya with so many goodies. We're gonna try and leave everything together so that it stays intact. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, let's get to some books that I bought for myself. So the first two are books that I read and I gave five stars to. And it was basically like my first dark romance that actually really worked for me. And that might make you question my morals as a human being, but it is the Darkly Madly duet by Trisha Wolf. Did I already haul these? It's possible I already hauled these. I can't remember when I last filmed a haul. Um, but this is basically a romance. It's very dark, it's very taboo. This is a romance between a serial killer and his criminal psychologist who gets assigned to him to potentially save him from death row. It's Harley Quinn Joker vibes because it's just like two crazies getting together and going down their descent into madness together. And it was everything. <laughs> so like I said, this is dark romance. Always check trigger warnings because there's also a lot of graphic violence in this book. Um, it's very much like true crime, serial killer stuff on page. Uh, so if you're a big fan of like, you know, Criminal Minds, SVU, like all of the crime things and crime podcasts where they go a little descriptive with the, the murdering, that's also in this book, but also some spicy time. So, I mean, it's the best of both worlds, am I right? What does that say about me as a human? I don't know, but I flew through these books. I read them on my Kindle and then I went and bought physical copies because I loved them that much. They are so good. Uh, so... I read those. Also, um, no, I read the first book on my Kindle and I discovered that they were available to listen to as a duet, like both books were in one package. Um, so I listened to the second one and our hero in this book has a slight Irish accent and the narrator has an Irish accent. So just tossing that out there. The next book I got, I'm so excited for this, is Waylaid. It's the eighth uh, True North book. So, okay. So now that the True North world has completely expanded outside of just Serena Bowen, there is a whole bunch of little like sub series that came out of this. Like the Vino and Veritas is all like LGBT um, romances. There's the Muyu, there's hockey romance. There's like four or five different um, sub series in this world now, all written by a ton of different authors. 
Um, but this one is technically the next actual true North book, like in the series. It's number eight of the series. Um, so, and it makes me happy because it has the same font and it's the same cover format as the others. It's gonna so bother me if all of like the next numbered ones in the actual True North series were gonna have all different fonts. You know, just reader problems. But this is Daphne's romance. This is one that we have all been waiting for for a very long time. I haven't read it yet. I'm so excited. It's also a little bit thicker than the other True North books. Where am I pointing? They are... <sighs> They're right there. Um, it's a little bit thicker than most of them, so I'm kind of excited for that. Uh, but this is this is Daphne's story. It's been a while since we've had like a female uh, story in the series, so I am so excited to finally get to this. And lastly, I am taking the plunge, guys, into Gianna Darling. Um, this is the Fallen Men series. This is basically what Gianna Darling is most well known for. Um, this is an MC story. I'm not big into motorcycle club romances, but I feel like I've read some that are good, and I think this might be the one to, like, change my mind. So, I got the first three books. Um, hey, Amber, I know that you watch my videos. I bought these off of, like, a romance Facebook group, um, and she recognized my name, which is still strange and weird to me. Uh, so hi, Amber. Shout out to you for sending me these books in a super fast, uh, timely manner. So we have, I think this is book one, Lessons in Corruption. I'm pretty sure this is book two, uh, Welcome to the Dark Side, and book three is Good Gone Bad. Correct me if I'm wrong on those orders. I just happen to have them in the stack in this order. Um, I think there are six out in the series at this point. She had these first three for sale, so I was like, I'll buy the first three, because um, there are no audiobooks for this yet. I'm pretty sure, I follow Gianna Darling on Instagram, I'm pretty sure she said that they're coming, so I feel like I, maybe I should hold off, but I didn't want to wait, so I bought these, just because I feel like I'm gonna like them. It's been a long time since I've bought books from a series just blind. I mean, I'm going off the recommendations of a million and a half people. Like, everybody loves Gianna Darling, so uh, I got a lot of black spines. So that's kind of weird. Um, okay, I got two books sent to me um, because I got picked up to be an Avon rep, um, which also kind of encompasses William Morrow, um, Harper. It's like the romance genres of HarperCollins. Um, I'm working with them now, and as, like, a welcome thing, uh, they offered me some of their, like, best-selling books, and I was like, oh, okay, sure, if you insist. So I think I have more coming at this point, if I remember correctly from the email. Um, there was, like, a list of them, but um, I got these two because I never owned a physical copy of The Hating Game, and The Hating Game, I feel like, swept the romance world, like, two-ish years ago. When did this come out? Um, I want to say, like, 2019 was when every... Oh my god, it came out in 2016? Am I that old? Have I been on booktube that long? Holy guacamole. 2016, really? Um, but when this first came out, this was, like, everybody's favorite romance book because it is a solid, really good contemporary enemies to lover workplace romance. Um, and this is Sally Thorne's second book. This is Second First Impressions, and I haven't read this one. I've heard mixed things about this, but I've also heard mixed things about The Hating Game, and I loved The Hating Game. It was super fun. So thank you so much to technically uh, William Morrow for sending these to me. Okay, and then I've got these two packages, both from Sourcebooks. Both of these are just kind of like spontaneous publicity things. I've obviously already opened them based on like the squiggles coming out, um, just because when I get one of these big boxes, I have no idea what's going to be in it. And when I get to the second box, you'll see why I open them quickly. We have a little sell sheet of the books that are in here, a sticker that says it's getting hot in here because, you know, romance, spicy times. So this is just like a collection of their top titles of the summer, I want to say. This was like kind of like an August end of the summer. These were the best titles from us. Here you go, promote them type of package, if that makes sense. So obviously the first one in there was Neon Gods by Katie Robert, which I already have a copy of, so I might do a giveaway. I've got a stack of giveaway books that have just been accumulating that I have to figure out what to do with them. Um, it'll, it'll happen at some point, but this is one of my favorite books of the year. And I am actually currently reading an arc of Electric Idol. I know, I can just feel the jealousy coming through the camera at me. Um, because they did send me an e-arc of the second book in that series, and I'm so excited. So we have that. We also have Freed by E.L. James. This is the third 
of the Fifty Shades of Grey retellings from Christian's point of view. So this is technically book three from Christian's POV. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I kind of want to read this. I I read the classics, guys. I read the Fifty Shades of Grey way back when. I read the Crossfire series way back when. I read the Maya Banks books. I read the classics of the smutty smut. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I they were not good. But I enjoyed myself while I was reading them. This was a fun series. This was one of the series, much like a lot of you guys, that got me into more smutty books. So I kind of am excited to revisit it. I haven't read Grey or Dark, Darker, or Freed yet. Like, I haven't read the Christian ones, and I feel like maybe I should just go back and instead of rereading the original ones, read the Christian version ones, which I think, I'm hoping, if you guys have read these, let me know. I'm hoping they're better because book Anna was terrible. Okay, she was the worst main character. Uh, so I'm hoping that like reading from Christian's perspective might be better. I don't know. If you guys have read the series, let me know if you think like the writing is better this time around. But I have the option to read it now, which is kind of exciting. Okay, another book that was in the box is one that is very exciting to me. It's called Under Her Skin by Adriana Anders. Um, incredibly sexy, heartbreaking, and intense. Sometimes love can leave scars. This just sounds like it's going to be a lot. Also, it's blurbed by Serena Bowen, who wrote Waylaid, the True North series. A dark and emotional tale that will make your spine tingle as well as your heart. Um, her body is his canvas. This is a darkly possessive relationship has left Uma alone and on the run. Beneath her job clothing, she hides a terrible secret. Proof of her abuse tattooed on her skin is a lurid reminder of everything she's survived. Who man. So this guy tattooed, like, his mark on her. I don't know what it is, but a lot of the rest of the description talks about, like, his mark scrawled across the delicate tapestry of her skin. That's kind of appealing to me. It sounds dark. It sounds intense. It sounds like it's going to be like a coming into your own type of story and dealing with trauma of the past. This one's going to be heavy. We're taking a heavy turn with this book. We've run out of room, so we'll start a second stack. Um, this next one. Okay, I already own this series. I actually think I have an arc of the first one. Um, and I've got feelings about it. Um... At least it's a finished copy of Against the Ropes by Sarah Castile. This is, what's, what is this series called? Uh, it's an MMA fighting series that I didn't like that much. Uh, oh, there's no series list in here. Um, I'll have to look up what the actual series is called. But this is a series that I think I might actually like the other books. Because we see the men, like the other men who are training at the same gym as the hero in this book. Um, and I think I'll like those guys better. This one in particular just rubbed me the wrong way. It was very... I could not suspend my belief for a lot of the things that happened in this book. Like this, if I remember correctly, I think this was the book that followed a girl who is in training, like she was in school to be an EMT, but she fainted at the sight of blood. And I was like, you're in the wrong career path, hon. Um, and it was just a very dickish alpha main character that sometimes that works for me. It didn't in this book, but maybe that'll go in the giveaway pile because I know a lot of people seem to like that series. Um, and I think I'll like the other ones. I just didn't care for the book one. And this next one has me so excited. Um, this one is called Hot Ticket by Olivia Cunning. Um, sinners on tour, on stage, on tour, in bed, they'll rock your world. So obviously this is going to be a rock star romance, but it looks dirty. I mean, she's got cuffs on already. So pff, if we're going there, I'm in. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I think we are going into like the BDSM world. Um, it says a man as talented as sinners, bass guitarist, Jay Seymour needs a woman who can beat out his self doubt. A woman as strong as Mistress V needs a woman she can't always overpower. And in each other's tight embrace, an escape from the harsh reality is always a welcome diversion. I think we're going into the BDSM world, which I will judge harshly, but I will enjoy myself the entire time. Uh, I'm into it. So Rockstar Romance meets BDSM. Into it into it. So those were the books that came in that box. And then, okay, we got this one. And this is the one that is the reason uh, that proves why I should always open these boxes as soon as they get delivered. Because this one came with cookies in it, um, like chocolate chip cookies that 
I literally was home when my mail person dropped it on my front step. My front step sits in the sun all day and um, I happened to walk out and just grab it right off after she drove away. And the cookies had already like started melting. Like there was already like chocolate smeared. So I'm glad that I did that. And that's usually why I open boxes because I never know what's gonna be in publicity boxes. But this one is in promotion for Witch Please. Um, so there is a finished copy of Witch Please in here by Anne Aguire, Ag Aguire, Aguire. And it came with this like fun print in the bottom. Um, and I'm pretty sure the cookies were in there because it also had like a promotional sticker for like Sugar Daddy's Bakery on the cookie package. Um, but this is obviously kind of light and fluffy PNR. Um, Danica is our main character and she's a fully modern witch and she's got her own deal, but we are also meeting Titus um, and his bakery, Sugar Daddies, and a romantic curse that he's convinced has left him doomed to be alone. So I think it's going to be their relationship, um, which just sounds so fun. Oh, it's blurred by Kristen Callahan on the back, who is like my most recent obsession author. Uh, I adore her so much. She wrote Make It Sweet, which has a lot of baking in it. Oh, I love it. I'm sold on this book now. Oh, her blurb is cute. It says, which please is a lovely breath a fresh cinnamon scented air. It's sweet and sexy and it's a soft, adorable romance we need right now. Oh, that sounds so cute. That sounds adorable. So I'm saving this one for probably September, October because that seems like the ideal time to read it. So that came with cookies from Sugar Daddy's Bakery, which is the bakery that's in the book. So that was super cute. But that is why I open packages because otherwise it would have been a chocolate catastrophe had that sat on my step all day long. So that concludes my haul as of right now. Thank you so much to everybody who sent me things. And thank you again to everybody who uh, joined my Patreon because I am still completely overwhelmed about everybody there and it's the coolest thing ever so thank you so much for the undying support that you guys have for me and that is going to be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in my next one